every business, no matter what size, is likely to make investment decisions over its lifetime. For example, a business might need to invest money into some new equipment or machinery. Alternatively, a business might be looking to invest in a new premises. But ultimately, no matter what the business is considering investing its money into, it is making the decision with the aim of making a return on the investment and increasing its profit over time. This is why so many businesses employ the average rate of return calculation to help make more informed investment decisions. Put simply, the average rate of return calculation helps businesses to evaluate the profitability of a variety of potential investments that they could make, which allows them to make clear comparisons and prioritise projects with higher potential returns, ultimately increasing the chances of making more profit. The average rate of return also serves as a performance indicator, enabling businesses to track the profitability of ongoing projects or investments. By monitoring the average rate of return over time, businesses can identify trends and take necessary actions to improve performance or divert from underperforming investments. In a nutshell, by comparing the average rate of return of different investments, businesses can determine the most financially rewarding options and allocate resources accordingly. It can even be used to compare potential investments against leaving money in a savings account. For example, let's imagine a business was currently earning 2% on its cash savings in a bank account and was considering upgrading some of its equipment and machinery with this money. But after calculating the average rate of return for the investment into equipment and machinery, they found that they are only expecting to receive a 1% return. This quick calculation has allowed the business to make a more informed decision to leave the money in the savings account rather than invest it into equipment and machinery. Now that we have a better understanding of the average rate of return and why it is used in business, let's switch our attention to how it is calculated and take a look at some examples. The average rate of return is calculated by dividing the average annual profit generated from an investment by the total cost of the investment and multiplying the result by 100 to express it as a percentage. But you won't always be provided with the average annual profit figure. So if you aren't, don't panic. You simply need to calculate the total profit return from the investment and divide it by the number of years the investment is expected to generate a profit for. And this will give you the average annual profit figure. Let's take a look at a worked example. A local fashion store is considering investing £100,000 in some new machinery to improve the efficiency and quality of its handmade clothing. The investment is expected to generate £25,000 of profit over the next five years, but the only wants to know what the ARR of the investment would be. In this scenario, the total profit of £25,000 is given to you, but the average annual profit isn't. So the first step you need to take is to calculate the average annual profit. So let's do just that. We know that the business is expecting to generate a total profit of £25,000 over the next five years. Simply divide this £25,000 of profit by the five years that it will be generated over and you will get an answer of £5,000. This is the average annual profit which the business expects to receive from the investment. Now, you can divide this average annual profit figure of £5,000 into the cost of the investment, which in this scenario is £100,000, and multiply the result by 100, providing you with an answer of 5%. This is the average rate of return for the investment. Now, it's your turn to have a go at calculating the average rate of return. In this scenario, a bakery business has decided to upgrade its oven, but needs to decide whether to invest in a brand new oven or purchase a second-hand one. The second-hand oven may be less reliable and will need to be replaced after three years, but it will only cost £45,000, whereas the new oven will have a useful life of five years, but it will cost £80,000. Your task is to calculate the average rate of return for both options to identify which one would be the better investment for the business. You can pause your screen now to attempt the question and then follow me as I walk you through the scenario once you are ready. Hopefully, you've all now had a go at calculating the ARR for the two investment options which the bakery business is considering. So let's walk through the calculations starting with the second hand oven. Now, the first thing you will have noticed is that the total profit wasn't given to you for either business in this scenario. 
So that's the first calculation you'll have to do. For the second hand oven, that will be inflows of £30,000 plus £35,000 plus £40,000 minus the cost of the investment of £45,000, giving the business a total profit of £60,000. Now, you can use this £60,000 total profit figure and divide it by the three years it was generated over, giving the bakery an average annual profit of £20,000. This figure then needs to be divided by the £45,000 cost of investment and multiplied by 100, meaning that the ARR for the second hand oven is 44.44%. In comparison, the new oven had a total profit of £110,000 once the net cash flows have been added together and this was generated over five years, giving the bakery an average annual profit of £22,000. This figure then needs to be divided by the cost of investment, which is £80,000, and multiplied by 100 to calculate the average rate of return, meaning that the ARR for the new oven is 27.5%. So in this scenario, the second hand oven has a better ARR of 44.44% in comparison to the new oven, which has an ARR of 27.5%. This shows that buying the second hand oven would be the best financial decision as the percentage return from the money invested would be higher. But it's important to note that the new oven would generate more profit for the business over its lifetime. Now that the bakery business has this information, it can make a more informed investment decision on which oven to purchase. Hopefully at this point, you feel like you're gaining a good understanding of what the average rate of return is all about and how it is calculated. So let's finish by taking a quick look at the advantages and disadvantages of using the average rate of return calculation in business. We will start with the advantages. Firstly, the average rate of return calculation is very straightforward and can be easily understood by investors and business professionals with varying levels of financial expertise. The average rate of return also enables businesses to quickly compare the profitability of different investment options, allowing them to make more informed decisions based on potential returns. By considering the average annual profit and the investment period, the ARR provides a long-term perspective on the performance and profitability of an investment. And businesses can use the ARR to assess the viability of potential investments and determine whether to pursue or abandon certain projects or initiatives before risking its money. But whilst the average rate of return offers some valuable insights for businesses, it also has some limitations that must be considered. Starting with the fact that the ARR calculation does not account for the time value of money. Failing to consider the fact that a pound received in the future is typically worth less than a pound received today. Another potential issue is that the ARR does not consider other essential factors such as cash flows, risks or market conditions that can influence investment decisions, potentially leading to inaccurate assessments of investment performance. But most crucially, the average rate of return relies on the estimation of future profits, which can be challenging to predict accurately, especially for long-term investments. 